The day we're taking a look at these NHL matches, which are happening on Wednesday, April 12, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comments section below. Montreal Canadiens vs Islanders. The Canadians are looking to end the season on a high note and pull off the upset. The problem is that the Islanders are fighting for a playoff spot and look to dominate this game on both ends of the ice. The Islanders should pile on the goals against the Canadians, who allow 3.70 goals per game, with Brock Nelson, Anders Lee, and the rest of the forward unit controlling the puck in the offensive zone and creating open shots with quick passes. The Islanders, who allow only 2.65 goals per game, should limit the Canadiens' offense, which averages only 2.76 goals per game, with Ryan Pulock, Scott Mayfield, and the rest of the defensive unit creating turnovers in the defensive zone and limiting shots on the net, allowing goaltender Ilya Sorokin to make plenty of big saves. The Islanders should win the game and cover the spread in a dominant win on their home ice. Our team pick is Islanders minus 1.5 goals. The offense has been struggling for Montreal recently. They scored three or fewer goals in seven of their last ten games. The Habs rank 26th in goals per game and 30th in shots per game. Goaltending has been very good for the Islanders this season. New York ranks 5th in goals against per game. Ilya Sorokin has a record of 30-22-7 with a 2.35 GAA and 0.925 SV%. Sorokin ranks 6th in GAA, 3rd in SV%, and 1st in shutouts among all goalies in the league. Montreal will struggle to score. This will be a lower scoring game, and the under will hit. Take the under, 6 goals. Dallas Stars vs St. Louis Blues. The Dallas Stars have been consistent all season long, but in recent times, they've notched it up quite a bit, building major momentum ahead of the playoffs, and on Wednesday, they have a chance to push ahead of the Avalanche for first place in the Central Division. In their past four games, the Stars have come away with a 4-0 record, as well as being 4-1 in their past five games played on the road, but against a Blues team with nothing to lose, they'll need to bring their absolute best into this one. The Stars are having a great season with their offense stepping up and scoring 3.44 goals per game, with 17 goals in the last four games. Jason Robertson and Joe Pavelski have scored 73 goals and 109 assists to lead the top line, but the rest of the offense has been great as well. Jamie Benn, Rube Hintz, and Tyler Seguin have combined for 89 goals and 108 assists, while defenseman Miro Heiskanen has added 11 goals and 60 assists from the point to open up the offense. The offense has been great, but the defense has stepped up as well, allowing only 2.66 goals per game, including only 4 goals in the last 4 games. Miro Heiskanen and Issa Lindell have combined for 10.6 defensive point shares and 243 blocked shots, while Johnny Hakampa and Colin Miller have combined for 9.2 defensive point shares to add depth to the unit. In addition, goaltender Jay Kettinger has been great with a .918 save percentage and a 2.41 goals against average on 1751 shots, with 23.6 goals saved above average. The Blues are having a rough year, but their offense has been a bright spot, scoring 3.23 goals per game, including 10 goals in the last three games. Jordan Kairou, Pavel Buchnevich, and Braden Shen have scored 84 goals and 120 assists to lead the top two lines, but the rest of the offense has stepped up as well. Brandon Saad, Robert Thomas, and Sammy Blaise have combined for 45 goals and 75 assists, while defensemen Justin Falk and Tori Krug have added 18 goals and 63 assists from the point to open up the offense. The Stars are looking to secure the top spot in the Central Division, and I see them controlling this game from the first period. The Stars, who average 3.44 goals per game, should pile on the goals against the Blues, who allow 3.65 goals per game, with Jason Robertson, Joe Pavelski, and the rest of the forward unit carrying the puck into the offensive zone and creating open shots with quick puck movement. 
the Stars, who allow only 2.66 goals per game, should limit the Blues' offense with Issa Lindell, Miro Heiskanen, and the rest of the defensive unit, creating turnovers in the defensive zone and limiting shooting lanes, allowing goaltender Jay Kettinger to make plenty of big saves. The Stars should win the game to extend their winning streak to five games with a strong performance on the road. Take the Stars' money line as road favorites. When both of these teams are at their best, goaltending and defense play a major part in success, but given how good the offensive units have been in recent times, there's no reason for anyone to expect any different heading into this clash. For the Stars, the over is 9-2 in their past 11 games played on the road, and for the Blues, the over is 4-1 in their past 5 games played on 3 or more days rest, so no matter the result, this one should be full of offensive fireworks, with plenty of great scoring chances. Take the over. San Jose Sharks vs Calgary Flames the Flames are the far superior team in this matchup and won all three previous games between these teams, covering the puck line in all of them, with 5-2, 7-3, and 5-3 victories against the Sharks this season. I give them an edge on both ends of the ice. The Sharks have been awful on both ends of the ice this year. They've scored just the 8th fewest goals in the NHL, having generated the 15th fewest expected goals, while they've allowed the 3rd most goals in the NHL, having given up the 10th most expected goals and the 10th most high danger shots in the league. The Flames have scored the 15th fewest goals in the NHL, having generated the 10th most expected goals and the 9th most high danger shots in the league, and they've allowed the 13th fewest goals in the NHL, having given up the 6th fewest expected goals and the 12th fewest high danger shots. I expect Calgary to complete the season sweep with a multi-goal win on home ice tonight to close out their season. Take the Flames to cover the puck line at home. The San Jose Sharks have had an awful season, one of the worst teams in the NHL, with a 22-42-16 record. They're on a four-game losing streak, coming off a 6-2 loss in Winnipeg on Monday night. The Sharks didn't have a chance in that game though as they were outshot 33-21 and dominated by an expected goal rate of 4.152.62. The Sharks have been awful on both ends of the ice this season. They've scored an average of just 2.88 goals per game, the 8th fewest in the NHL, on an average of 29.5 shots per game. They've generated the 15th fewest expected goals per 60 minutes, 3.15, and the 11th most high danger shots in the league. San Jose's power play is the 8th worst in the NHL, scoring on only 18.4% of their opportunities. They're led in scoring by Eric Carlson, who picked up his 100th point of the season on Monday night, a fantastic milestone, and has 75 assists this season. The Flames haven't been all that great offensively this season. They've scored the 15th fewest goals in the NHL, averaging 3.14 goals per game on an average of 35.8 shots per game. They've generated the 10th most expected goals per 60 minutes, 3.33, and the 9th most high danger shots in the league. Calgary has scored on 19.9% of their power play chances. Tyler Toffoli leads them in scoring with 73 points and 34 goals, while Elias Lindholm leads them with 42 assists. All three previous games between these teams this season have easily hit the over with 7, 10, and 8 total goals. Both teams have trended over this season with the over in Flames games going 40-39-2 this season, and Sharks games being very profitable on the over, going 49-31. I expect those trends to continue tonight as both of these teams have struggled defensively, especially San Jose. They've allowed the third most goals in the NHL, having given up the 10th most expected goals and the 10th most high danger shots. I expect the Flames to score easily on them, while the Sharks contribute offensively with a few goals of their own. Take the over here.